Good morning. Miss Chin has asked me to talk a little bit about how you can take some of the patterns, the translation arts, the uh, tessellations that you're creating in your math class, and um, and use Adobe Illustrator to create those patterns. So, um, just as an example, I've started sort of creating one here. You can see. Um, so what I might do in Adobe Illustrator to do this is I might start with a simple shape. Um, I might make sure it's a square by holding shift while I draw it. And if you remember from last year, uh, you can manip manipulate the anchor points of these shapes with the white arrow. The white arrow is the um, direct selection tool. And so you might make a shape something like this or one like the one you've hand drawn. Um, you can change the fill color here. And then what you might start to do is copy and paste these shapes. Um, and maybe you might start by reflecting them. So let's copy it and paste it. And then uh, you can do all sorts of math things here. You can, of course, uh, rotate, reflect, and, and then translate, which is move. So I'm going to reflect this shape to start off with. And then what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to rotate it. You can rotate, obviously, in the transform um, menu here. But I like to just kind of free transform it here with the uh, rotation. Now it rotates from the center of the shape, which makes it a little hard to line up. But you can do it, I am sure, with a little bit of persistence. You can use the arrows on the keyboard if you need to move it. And then you can change the inside color. So here you can see I've started creating my pattern and I can do this all sorts of ways. In my previous example, I kind of went around the center like that, but you might decide to do something different. You don't have to do the same sort of thing all through. Um, just to show you how I did that, so I selected both and copied with edit copy or command C, paste with edit paste or command V. and translate them and create all sorts of cool things. If you've hand drawn something already, no, I didn't hand draw this myself, but I'm just, I looked up some examples here. You could bring in those shapes into Photoshop, or sorry, Adobe Illustrator. Um, so you could take a picture with your camera on your iPad, or you may have, um, you could scan it with a scanner. So let's say, um, you hand drew something like this. It's pretty cute. I'm going to bring this in to Adobe Illustrator. Um, why don't I copy it? So, assuming this was my hand drawn thing, uh, I'll make a new page. I'm going to make it um, the size of paper. Paste it. And then, this is super huge. So as you might recall, um, we can make a simple square really complex shapes. So I'm just going to start by sort of tracing out a square over top of this. I'm going to say it has no fill for right now, and I'm going to give it a, um, maybe a pink outline just so it's easy to see here. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to actually increase the size of that line just so it's easier to see in the video. Okay, and then what I can do is use the direct selection tool to move anchor points until I have it tracing the exact shape of this yellow figure here. So I'm going to start every time you start, you move the anchor points until they're touching exactly a point on the outside of the shape. Then I add more add, uh, anchor points, object, path, add anchor points. So I'll move these ones, all the newly created ones, move them so again they're just touching the outside of the shape. And over time it'll slowly take the shape of the object every time I do it. So object, path, add anchor points. And you can see over time this will create the exact shape of this little creature here. 
So if it's not touching the outside line, I move it. If it is, I leave it how it is. Looks good. Object, path, add anchor points again. And over time, this will become the exact shape that we see here. Even the teeth here. Um, just bit by bit, moving moving them, adding more anchor points, moving them, adding more anchor points. It's really important to make sure you move those anchor points, all of them, so that they're always touching that outside line, or you'll run into trouble as you add more and more anchor points. But hopefully this makes sense. Sometimes if I have too many sort of close together, I might move a few of them. And bit by bit, slowly it will become the shape that you'd hand-drawn on paper. I hope that makes sense. Um, then you can, when you're ready, turn off that background layer. Um, layers. Turn off the background, you have your shape, and then you can start copying, reflecting, translating, rotating, all that sort of stuff. Hope that helps.